everyone. I just wanted to make a quick screencast to check in with you about the timeline assignment for our New Mexico history class. First of, uh, off, let me apologize for the background noise on this one. Um, I'm at Starbucks working because it's a Sunday morning, so um, such it is. Uh, apologies for the background noise. Um, getting right to it, um, you're doing very well thus far with the timeline. Of course, all that needs to be done by tonight, Sunday at midnight, is for you to have uh, created a placeholder for the topic that you've chosen for Unit 2. Um, so I'm going to just walk you through the steps of how to get there once again. And of course, there is the video tutorial um, over here in the timeline area. Um, so when you click on the timeline tab, this link takes you to the timeline. This one gives you the instructions for what to do. And here is the video tutorial. As you scroll down, there are other tutorials to help out with the idea of uh, historical significance. It's not something that uh, you're required to specifically address in these assignments. Um, and then down here, these are all of the areas where you will submit your timeline work on Blackboard. So remember that you have to submit both to Blackboard and to the timeline on TikTok. There are links to these uh, submission folders from each learning module as well. Um, so if you're in the unit learning module, you can find that um, that way. So I'm going to click this link and open our timeline on TikTok. So this will take us there. Um, it pops up this window that, depending on how good your internet is, I might have to double check this image. Every now and then, some of those great images don't display. Um, you can just click continue, or the X there, and you can see the course timeline. Um, and again, like I said, everyone's done a great job of placing their, their placeholder thus far. Not everyone has completed it, but those who have done a good job of it. Again, all you need to do is put it on the correct time frame on the timeline, give the title of what topic you've chosen, and put in your name. Um, I did want to point out um, whoever's done Christopher Columbus, um, great choice, but please uh, go back and add your name just so that uh, we know who's claimed this one. Um, let's see, otherwise, um, let's see. So again, that's, that's basically for those of you uh, that just uh, need a pat on the back um, and I wanted to let you know that you're doing a good job, that is it. Um, I will, uh, at this point, uh, walk you through how to log in. So those of you who have already uh, placed your work here may not need this part, so that's okay. Um, but for those of you that need the login information, click the word login and screen will change and it will pop up this window. You use the credentials that I have given you um, in the timeline assignment instructions for our class that is bmorgan 19 and then down here, it's capital H, IST, 226, and then you click login. Once you do, you'll see this page. Don't worry if you go down here and it says you've reached the limit of accounts. That's not a problem. Uh, you don't need to create a new timeline. You need to just work on the timeline that I have already created for our class. So you just click the words New Mexico history here. And you'll see the same thing you just saw, except now you'll have this admin button. So you click the admin button to see everyone, where everyone has entered their posts. Um, so if it's your time to go and add um, your placeholder to the timeline, um, you will look over what's already here just to make sure that someone hasn't already taken yours. Uh, I'm thinking of doing uh, Fray Marcos de Nisa, which if that's someone you want to take, please do. I'm going to add it here just to show you, and then I'm going to delete it. So um, I've noticed that Fray Marcos de Nisa, um, well, let me point out a problem here with Estebanico. Um, this one's posted at 1500 BC, um, and it should be 1500 AD. Um, so uh, just make, make note of that, um, especially as we're starting out, there might be some between the AD and the BC, um, I'll show you how to fix that as I go in here. And Elaine, if you get a chance, if you watch this, please uh, go and uh, set that to 1580 when you get a chance. 
Okay, so I'm going to go and add mine. Like I said, I'm going to create a new story. I'm going to type in my and then to put in the date, and again, make sure that you have the dates in mind as you go to do this, you uh, click the calendar, and it will pop this up here, this date picker. Of course, it gets really loud as I'm trying to explain this part. Um, you need to um, type in date. So I'm going to do uh, 1539. Um, I'm just, it's okay if you're just uh, choosing the year and you don't have the exact uh, date and month uh, for when the Coronado expedition left, for example. That's the date that I'm using here. Um, it happened in the later spring, but I didn't look up the exact date. So, um, so what I'm telling you is that it's okay to be just as specific as the correct year for these. You have to, though, click on the actual calendar and then click confirm to get it to take your date. Um, and then you will go ahead and enter your name here. Um, you should choose it's a person. You don't need to do anything else at this point. Though. So I click save. And if I go look over here, now Marcos Denisa is on the timeline as a placeholder. All right, I hope that helped a bit. Um, that's all we needed to do for tonight. Um, after this, you will go in and add your information. So please do refer back to the timeline assignment instructions for that. And also look at the example that I posted about Beringia at the very beginning of the timeline.